So uh, what we've got here is a Compact Logic uh, PLC, and in this uh, PLC we have a uh, IF4FX0F2F analog fast I/O card. Now this card is uh, it's got four analog inputs and two analog outputs. So we have to configure both the input and the output. So if we click on the input configuration, you can see here that uh, we have uh, four channels, channels 0 through 3, and there's a checkbox, so we have to enable them. So if we're going to use them, we have to enable them. Otherwise, you leave them unchecked, and then you're not using them. And then we get to choose our input range. So we can, use, we can either input voltage signals, which can be... Uh, some of the voltage signals we talked about minus 10 to plus 10 0 to 5 0 to 10 or we can choose current ranges and so I'm going to uh, select 0 to 20 milliamps here uh, as I said the analog card always reads from 0 to 20 milliamps but if you like or, or, or you know 0 to 10 volts or whatever if you choose that. So the analog card is actually always reading from 0. But if we chose the 4 to 20 milliamp range here, it would basically do a little bit of scaling for us um, on there. So, But we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it uh, 0 to 20 milliamps. And um, the filter here, when you select this filter, what you want to do is uh, uh, the, you know, you can filter, it, it, it applies a filtering to the data, and so you want to kind of slow that filtering down to prevent the data from changing too fast. So I'm going to choose the lowest option here, which is 5 hertz, and so what that means is that it's, it's going to try to really reduce a lot of the high input noise. And then we have the data format. So the data format here, we can do raw engineering units. Um, there's a scaling option for PID, which is later in the class we'll talk about what a PID is. Uh, and then there's a percentage. So now remember that analog cards actually convert an analog signal into a binary integer value. And so these values here, these inputs are actually integers. So what they do is if we're feeding it 0 to 20 milliamps and we select engineering units, what that's going to do is it's going to make it microamps. And the reason they do that is because we can't, let's say you had 4.17 milliamps. Well, you can't do decimal points with an integer. So what they do is they, they multiply it by 1,000 and make it microamps so you can have 4,170 microamps and you don't have to worry about the decimal point and yet you still have uh, three decimal points basically worth of precision so that's what they're doing if you were to select uh, raw the raw value is just that raw binary number uh, but it actually it's a number it's a 16-bit number but it's a signed number, so the most significant bit is a sign. So it actually goes from like minus 32,000 uh, to up to uh, plus 32,000 and some change. Or we can choose percentage. If we choose percentage, then what we're doing with percentage is we can go from 0 to 100%. But again, it's an integer value. So if you wanted, say, 30.7%, you couldn't do that because it's an integer so what they do is they scale it by a thousand so it actually goes from zero uh, up to like 100,000 for 100 percent okay. or maybe it's 10,000 I forget uh, yeah. um, but they, they scale it and then um, on the output configuration we have to do the same thing we have to enable it we have to choose what our output, whether it's going to be a current or a voltage, and then choose whether we're going to do engineering units or what here. So we set the output, and then we also have to set the output limits. So uh, remember that 
If we choose engineering units, we're talking microamps because I chose the current signal. Uh, so it's going up to 20 milliamps, which would be 20,000 microamps. So if you choose uh, that, technically it can actually go all the way up to 21 um, milliamps or 21,000 microamps. And so that's why I've got the high clamp set here. Now we could um, set this clamp and, and just limit it so it couldn't go above 20 and we could just set it to 20,000 and that would do that. All right, so I'm going to apply this. Now you may notice I'm actually online. It's one thing about this card when you, uh, you can actually change these settings on the fly. Now if you're actually have this uh, set up and running uh, control in a live environment, you really don't want to be changing this on the fly, which is why they have this inhibit choice here. But uh, in the lab here, we can actually just change it on the fly and there's no real harm. So as you can see here, I've, I've got two uh, math computations. I have a multiply and then I have a division. So what I have, if we look at our tags, under tags I have my, um, I have a number out tag, which is just a floating point value, right? So this is a real number that can have float have decimal points and then I have a number in which can also have decimal points now notice these do not have an alias because these are just numbers inside the PLC and then I have what I call in underscore channel 0 which is mapped to my first input my channel 0 input remember the uh, local 4 it's in slot 4 so the 4 means it's in slot 4 and the I means it's an input Okay, so that's pretty obvious. Now, again, look at the data type here. This is a 16-bit integer. Okay, so this input is an integer. It cannot have a decimal point. Uh, likewise, the output, it's still in module 4, but it's an output, so it's an O, and it's channel 0. So it's the first channel of outputs. I only have two output channels. And again, it's an integer. So these are my tags, and so what I'm doing here is I'm using a multiplier block. So I put in like 4.2 milliamps. So here's 4.2 milliamps, and then um, I multiply that times a thousand to make it 4,200 microamps, and I'm outputting that then through uh, through the card out to uh, a meter, I'll show you the meter here in a minute, but I'm outputting that to a, a current meter and then I'm coming, um, I'm also feeding it in to channel 0 in. Alright, so when we look here then we can see that the uh, <clears throat> this is the card here or this this is the PLC here's our PLC here's our module 4 which is our analog module and then we've got this hooked up through our terminal block so I'm coming out uh, terminal 22 here which is the current out and I'm feeding that current out into the current input into the input and then I'm coming out that input and going into the meter. So we're going into our current meter here. And then we're coming back out of the current meter into our, our negative feed of our analog out so that we have a complete circuit. Remember to have a current, you have to have a complete circuit running. So you can see I've got 4.2 milliamps there. So you can see on the meter there's 4.2 milliamps and you can see over here that I'm outputting 
So um, I'm outputting 4.2, which is actually being multiplied by 1,000, so it's outputting 4,200 microamps. And then the channel in, then, you can see it's bouncing around a little bit. So that's why we kind of put a filter on there to minimize that. Um, but uh, you can see it's, it's bouncing right around 41 uh, and a half to uh, 42 milliamps coming in. All right. So you can see it's, it's a constant. It's a 4.208 milliamps. Uh, on the meter when you look at the meter. Now we can change this uh, so we can say well let's give me 16.513 uh, milliamps which is 16,513 microamps and again we can kind of see that down here as it comes in it is being um, you know, there's there's some noise and stuff in the system, so it bounces around a little bit uh, due to that noise, due to a noisy power supply and, and other noise injected in the system. So, uh, but you can see uh, the uh, the input coming in is about 16.5. Okay. So let's just take a look at a couple of uh, things here. Number one, if we come back to our configuration and on my input configuration I'm going to change it to um, 100 Hertz for a filter okay. and so when you do this you see that it's maybe bouncing around a little bit faster I guess maybe not a whole lot more but maybe a little bit more bouncing around okay. so uh, we want to depending on what your needs are if you want it to react really fast then you need to have a, a higher frequency for your filter but if you just want to if it's a fairly slow system you want a slow filter so five Hertz would be a fairly slow filter so I'm going to apply that uh, the uh, the other thing is though now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to raw proportional Okay, now I'm only, only going to change the input at the moment. I could change the output also, but I'm just going to change the input. So now, if we go up to 20 milliamps, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put out 20 milliamps. So you can see I'm outputting 20 milliamps. And you can see that that 20 milliamps is getting just about 30,000 coming in. Now remember I said technically this card can all go all the way up to 21 milliamps, which gives us our 32,000 number. Okay, so uh, that's why at 20 milliamps they they give us a little bit of extra basically in there. So we have really have 21 milliamps we can do. So if we just go to 20 milliamps. You can see it's only a, at about 29 and a half thousand coming in. But let's see what happens if I go to zero. If I go to zero, we're actually at our minus 32,000 number. So remember that the most significant bit is a sign bit. And so they're, you know, it's actually going from minus 32,000 up to, if we went all the way up to our 21 milliamps, it would be. Uh, 32, uh, positive 32,000, right, all the way down to a minus 32,000. Okay, so if you remember, the actual number there is a positive 32,667, and the minimum no number would be minus 32,768. Okay, so the negative actually goes all the way down to that uh, even value of 68. All right, um, so that shows you the, uh, let's see, the, let's go to the input configuration here again. All right, and so um, that was raw proportional. Now, if I go to percentage, okay, so now I'm going to change it to percentage. And so now it's a percent. Now I only changed the input again. Okay. So I've only changed the input, but now you can see, right, I'm 
the output is outputting zero, so the input has got zero coming in. Again, it's not quite zero, it's, it's like 80. Um, but when we divide that by 1,000, we can see that, right, that's way less than a percent. All right, so it's bouncing around. Again, that's just noise in the system. Uh, that's one thing, this is a fast analog card, so it responds really fast. So any kind of noise, you see it pop up in there right away on this fast card and so we're looking at um, 80 microamps of, of noise in the system all right if we go up to say uh, 10 milliamps right 10 milliamps would be 50 percent or 5,000 okay and so if we go all the way up to 20 milliamps then then we're at you know just under 10,000 there okay so it goes up to 10,000 so they again they they're scaling that so that you um, you know so that you have some resolution so because we can't have a decimal point because the analog uh, cards are really integer values they're converting that current into an integer so you can't uh, you can't have a decimal point and an integer value which is why they basically multiply it the percentage I guess they're they're really multiplying by a hundred so you're getting five thousand or ten thousand out of that uh, the engineering units they're multiplying by a thousand so that gives you some precision you can work with there so again, this is the compact logic card. The if you remember the control logic cards actually will kind of do that uh, will do that scaling for you. You can configure it and it'll actually store it in a floating point value and with the scaled values. But with these uh, compact logics, they just read in integers. The analog card reads in an integer value so again let's look at the tags okay we look at the tags and there's uh, it's just reading in um, the, the actual input and output cards here are just reading integer values okay so then you have to use your uh, math block to convert that into floating point real values